Hey guys, this week for Weapons Wednesday, we're going to take a look at these indestructible plastic tonfa and some other weapons that we just added to the KarateMart.com website. But before we begin, if you could just like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. Alright, so as usual, I had Amanda go back to the warehouse and she grabbed some of our new and unique items for me to review. She's already packaged them up for me so that I don't know what they are. And as usual, there's links in the description to each product so you can get more info about them from the KarateMart.com website. So without further ado, what's the first item? There you go. Awesome. And just so you guys know, I put a poll in the community tab on their YouTube page so that you can actually vote for which item is your favorite. All right. The first item is, oh, dang it, <laughs> <laughs> the silver stun gun pen. Okay, so we've actually shown off the black stun pen before. This is the silver version. I'm glad you showed this off because this is, this is kind of cool and we haven't shown off a stun gun pen since the very first stun gun video I did long time ago. Uh, so these are kind of neat. They're, they're very small. I love the fact that they can just be concealed right in your pocket. And if you need them, you just pull it out, put the safety up, and then shock with it. So some of the things I like about this is, first off, the compact size of it is awesome, but it's also got these battery indicator lights on the pen so you can see that it's charged fully or if it needs to be charged. Um, and then all you have to do when you want to use it is just hit this button up top. And, uh, and then it shocks. So, I mean, that's pretty, pretty neat. And then it's, uh, it's got a micro USB charging port there so you can charge it up really easily. Um, my concern with these type of stun guns is that this is so small that I'm always worried that it's not gonna be effective enough. Um, and uh, this one, the manufacturer says, is approximately 25 million volts. So if you've watched any of my videos, you know that we don't take that number seriously because the manufacturers just throw a number onto their products to make them look like they're stronger than other stun guns. Plus there's variables like amps and resistance that are also important when, when figuring out the strength of a stun gun. So the way that we like to test them is we like to actually just hit the button and see how loud they are. And that usually gives you a good idea of how strong they're gonna be. So again, that's not overly loud. So this is probably not the strongest stun gun in the world. I would honestly be nervous about using something like this if you actually had to defend yourself. I would probably want to know some self-defense techniques in addition to using the stun gun. But let's just see if it's actually effective. I'm gonna have Amanda come over here and she's actually gonna stun me. But with something this small, I wanna get a really good idea of how strong it is. So I'm actually gonna hold on to the table because what usually happens is when she stuns me, I jump away really quick. So I'm actually going to hold on to the table and I'm going to let her stun me for about two seconds and just see how effective it actually is. So, yeah. all right, here we go. Ah! <laughs> you still okay. dropped him. I, I, I took a couple good stuns there. Um, it definitely, definitely hurts a lot. It hurts a lot and I could see Ah, I, I could see getting stunned by that and just wanting to jump away or leave the scene. So I could see it being effective as a deterrent in that respect. But if you've got someone who's, you know, high on crystal meth or something, that is not going to be an effective weapon. So I would definitely suggest having some self-defense techniques at your disposal in order to keep yourself safe. Um, but this is a good deterrent. Uh, pretty neat for its size. It's pretty awesome. This is actually approximately six inches long and it only weighs about 1.3 ounces. So really light. Um, you wouldn't even know you have it on you. It's got a pocket clip, which is pretty awesome. Um, and uh, that's about all I have to say about that. So let's go ahead and put that away. And uh, oh, one other thing I should mention is if you buy a stun gun, any stun gun, don't ever just hold down the button because... I mean, you can do it for a second, but if you hold down the button for very long, it'll actually destroy the diodes and then the stun gun will break a lot quicker. So never just sit there and hold down the stun gun button in the air. It's not a good idea. So, all right, Amanda, hand me the next item. There you go. Thank you. Okay. And uh, you, you notice I'm shaking a little bit. You know, I have, every week I have somebody comment on the video about you're shaking, Kyle, are you okay? Is your blood pressure too high? My blood pressure last week at the doctor is 120 over 80, which is a pretty good blood pressure. The reason why I shake in my videos is because 
I need to focus when I'm making these. I need to have a certain level of energy. So I actually use my pre-workout that I use for working out prior to making these videos, which allows me to be focused, but it does have that little problem of making me shake a little bit. But anyway, so the next item is the Dark Skull Knuckle Duster. Oh cool, we actually showed off a knuckle duster last week too. And this one's pretty unique. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so it's, it looks like a standard knuckle duster, but it's got these little black skulls in the front, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot. Um, okay, so this is made out of a metal alloy. I don't know what type of metal it is, but it's got a really nice finish to it, a really nice black dark finish. So I like how stealthy it is. That's pretty cool. Um, when I put it in my hands, it's actually really comfortable. Now this is one of those one of those knuckle dusters that I probably want to wear up on my knuckles just a little bit higher, just by the way that it feels and you know the size of those holes. It actually feels more comfortable that way. So I'd probably punch more like that. So yeah, see how that just split right through the pump through the watermelon. Just a quick side hook, and then we just split open that watermelon like nothing. So that's a pretty effective knuckle duster. Pretty awesome. Um, it's approximately four and a half inches wide by two and three quarters inches tall. Um, one thing that I do need to mention though is you need to check your local laws when it comes to knuckle dusters because the laws are really strict on these things and it's different based on what country you're in, what state you're in, what city you're in, what municipality you're in, and the laws are different based on what can be sold there, what can be owned, and what can be carried. So it's very important that you check your local laws to make sure it's okay for you to carry something like this. But uh, this is pretty awesome. I actually like this a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and put this away and let's go on to the next item. There you go. Awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. And I'm using this wood grain stiletto from a few weeks ago. I absolutely love this thing. It's uh, turned into my new box cutter. Okay. The modern combat machete. <laughs> okay, another machete. So a lot of you probably didn't notice this, but I'm wearing the same shirt as in my last video, which granted I wear very similar shirts every week, but I'm actually recording this video directly after last week's video because I'm actually at a convention in Chicago right now looking at new machinery to make new weapons. So I actually had to record two in a row, but the reason I'm telling you that is because I have this major cut on my finger from handling the machete from the last video. So it makes me a little bit nervous handling this machete, but I wasn't very careful with it. I need to be more careful with this one. All right, so let's take a look at this. Okay, this is cool. All right, look at that. I actually like the look of that a lot. That's pretty neat. It's got a really cool contrast between the black finish and then the blade. And that blade looks like it's made out of a stainless steel, but it's a very thick blade. Like if you look back there, you can see how thick that is. So that's not gonna break very easily. And it's full tang. We can see it goes all the way through the handle. We've got this uh, wood handle on there and that is definitely a pack of wood for sure. Um, but it's very comfortable. It's actually really comfortable. We've got the, the jimping up top, which gives you a, a nice good thumb grooves to hold on to, gets you good control on that blade. The blade itself, it's not as sharp as that hook bill machete that we showed last week, but it's still very sharp. And then we've got some venting on the blade too, which venting is nice because it actually decreases the weight of a blade a little bit. But this one I can tell is actually added more for aesthetic appeal, which it does give it a really nice aesthetic appeal. Uh, the point, the tip is actually somewhat sharp, not overly sharp. If I were to buy this, I would definitely take it to a belt sander and just sharpen it up a little bit. And one of the things that's nice about this is because of the way that they put the black finish on the blade, it would be easy to sharpen up with a belt sander and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't mess up the finish at all. It would look great. Uh, we also have this little lanyard hole back there so we could add a wrist strap to it if we wanted. Uh, let's see. The weight is approximately one pound, so that's got a really nice weight to it. That actually feels really comfortable. Um, okay, one thing up here, we noticed that there's a good false edge on there. It's not sharp, but it looks cool. I mean, it's definitely a false edge. Um, let's see, it's approximately 16 inches wide, and the blade length is about nine and three quarters inches. 
And I don't think there's anything else to tell you about other than it comes with this sheath, this nylon sheath. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Um, let's see, I guess we probably want to see how sharp this thing is. Just hold this guy up. Well, I mean, let's grab something else. Sir, grab me something else. Um, pineapple. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So I'm just going to hold the pineapple up here, up top. Yeah, I mean, this thing's, this thing's sharp, definitely sharp enough to take out a pineapple like nothing. Um, so pretty awesome. I like it. All right, let's go ahead and put that away. Move on to the next one. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. All right. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, the vented butterfly training knives. So we've got three different butterfly training knives in here. And, um, you know, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I love butterfly knives. I absolutely love them. Um, and I actually really like butterfly trainers just because you can learn tricks you couldn't normally practice with a normal butterfly knife. You can be a little bit, a little bit more creative with it. So first off, we notice it has a spring latch. So that's kind of nice. So when you want to open it, you just kind of pu push the handle together and the spring latch opens. So that allows you to go right into a trick, which is great. Um, we've got the venting on the blade and that looks like it's got like a stone wash finish to it. So that looks pretty nice. The handle itself is vented, so this has a good weight to it. It looks like it weighs approximately 4.5 ounces, so that's a good weight. Um, feels really nice. Um, but yeah, what I was saying is like, so when you're learning butterfly knives, I used to love doing things like flips and throws and stuff. Doing that with a live blade is pretty scary. So it's always good to learn with a trainer for sure. Um, this also has rivets instead of screws, which if you watch my videos, you know I prefer rivets over screws. And most people prefer screws because you can take out the screws, you can change the blade, you can also adjust the tension um, so you have a different play with your knife. I like the rivets because they keep the same tension at all times. And when you first get them, they're always a little bit tight. But that goes away within a day of playing with them and then it just becomes the perfect tension on your knife. So I really prefer rivets. That's just me though. Um, let's look at the other ones. So we got this one. This is a vented butterfly training knife. And then this guy is the gold vented butterfly training knife. Oh, that's cool. Look at that finish on that. That's really nice. Ooh, I like that. It's really shiny. So yeah, this would be, let's see how well the play, yeah, the play is great on this. I, like, I, I wouldn't even need to play with this throw for very long. It would actually just basically right out of the box, like perfect. So yeah, this is an awesome training knife. I actually like how the handles curve too. It's not like CSGO curve. It's just like a nice curve to where I can still do a lot of the same tricks and it doesn't affect the tricks at all. So I like that. And then let's see, we also have the vented blue butterfly trick. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is sweet. Okay, so let's just look at that. Look at that. That is stunning. So if you want a little bit of flash or flare in your butterfly training, I would go with the blue one. The blue is like super nice. Definitely catches the light really nicely. So yeah, I like that a lot. That's pretty cool. And the blade is approximately four inches. Total length is approximately nine and a quarter inches when it's opened and when it's closed, it's approximately five and a quarter inches and it weighs about 4.5 ounces. And I can't think of anything else to really tell you about that. So let's go ahead and put those away and look at something else. We're making a mess up here. Yeah, awesome, awesome. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Oh, cool, cool. <laughs> I'm so glad we're doing these. We, uh, I would have liked to do these a long time ago, but we were having trouble getting them in during the pandemic. Um, so we have them back again, which is awesome. So these are the indestructible plastic tonfa. Now, uh, you can tell they're injection molded out of one solid piece of polypropylene. So there's nothing here that's going to allow them to break easily. Now we call them the indestructible plastic tonfa, but Obviously, nothing's indestructible. These things could be melted on a stove or you could take a hacksaw and cut them up or something. But as far as like durability goes, these things are going to be way stronger than using a wooden pair of tonfa or, you know, even the aluminum tonfa could, could ding or something. These things do not get damaged easily at all. They're actually perfect. And the weight of these is approximately one pound, which if you're, if you're used to a wooden pair of tonfa, 
Wooden paratonfa that would be the same size would be almost identical weight wise. So as far as like switching them up, polypropylene's a great alternative to wood. I actually, if I would have had these when I was a kid, I would have probably chosen these. So these are awesome. It's funny because my uh, first martial arts instructor when I was you know, pretty young, this is the first weapon he, he made me learn. He wanted me to learn tanfa before anything else. And I'm so appreciative of that because it is such an amazing weapon. I absolutely love them. Um, let's see, what do we need to tell you about them? They're sold as a pair and the, the length is approximately 23 inches. Now, for people who know the tanfa, you know that you typically want the length to be at your elbow or a little bit beyond your elbow, so that if you're having to block, it's gonna protect your entire arm. So, as far as length goes, this is perfect for me. It'd probably be perfect for most people. Um, durability, this thing's gonna hold up to anything. Yeah, as you can see, there's like, Yeah, I mean, pretty awesome. I love these things. Um, so they just feel nice. That's not going to damage them at all. You can do your strikes with them. Pretty awesome. I absolutely love these Tanfa. Um, so yeah, again, if you're looking for a good pair of Tanfa, these things are perfect. But if you have any questions on these or any of the other weapons I showed off in this video, definitely leave them in the comments below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. And check out KarateMart.com because we just added all sorts of new weapons to the website. And then also, go to the community page and actually vote for which weapon you liked best from this video. That way I'll have a better idea of what kind of weapons you want to see in future videos. But until next week, we'll see you Weapons Wednesday.